All right, let's get this underway. What's up, everybody? Zach here with the Indie Rundown YouTube channel and podcast. Um, been away for a while. We haven't really posted much or posted many shows. Um, it's been a busy holiday season, but uh, we're back. And um, I just wanted to put together this quick video and give out my thoughts on Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker because, God almighty, to be a Star Wars fan these days is just incredibly incredibly tough because the fandom at this point is just uh i think it's beyond salvageable um aside from the mandalorian the mandalorian was pretty dope and i think a lot of people enjoyed that myself included but yeah the uh god man there's just the the fandom you know ever since disney bought lucasfilm and all these new films have been coming out it's just been wild and uh it's getting to the point where you can't even really talk to people anymore because they're so set in their ways regarding their opinions um you know i'm right you're wrong type shit you know what i say goes i don't want to hear other people's shit you know i i'm right you know and that's fine if you have your own opinion like i there's stuff that i hate about the disney star wars shit but um i'm not gonna say i'm right i'm not gonna say other people are wrong you know it's just my opinion i don't like a lot of the shit that kathleen kennedy has put out i don't think she's a good leader i don't think she is good at um organizing stuff and we'll get into that uh because I just, I, I just, I don't think she's, I don't think she's good. She's not a good leader. I think they need someone more. I think they need someone better at world building, like a Kevin Feige in Marvel. You know, who plans stuff out, you know, well in advance and very meticulously, and and knows what they want to do. But yeah, I just don't see that with uh, Kathleen Kennedy. You know, great, great woman. You know, she's, she's, you know, she's, <laughs> she's, um. She's great, but, you know, as far as running Lucasfilm, uh, yeah, I don't know about that. But anyways, uh, I just wanted to talk real quick about Rise of Skywalker because um, a lot of people have asked me what I thought about it, like I said, and I'm going to keep it real short and sweet. I'm not going to make a 15, 20 minute video. Um, I, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, but it didn't come without its flaws. I think, uh, hold on a second, let me tell this asshole to stop texting me, um, but no, I... <sighs> here's here's my thing i thought it was good given what they had to do um jj had to cram so much shit into one movie and um i i think that it was just too much it was just too bloated it was way too it was too fastly paced it wasn't that bad i mean i enjoyed it there was really never a dull moment for me um but at the same time i just I feel like this this could have been spread out over two films, you know, or at least split it into two parts, uh, because I thought, you know, they're trying to cram so much in in the very beginning, like in the space of two minutes, Kylo Ren finds something on a planet and goes and sees Palpatine, who, by the way, Palpatine right off the bat is back. I mean, it's it's a little jarring. Um, someone like Palpatine, I would have liked to have gotten a lot more backstory on way to how the fuck are you back? Like. Last time I saw you, you were thrown down a reactor shaft, and then after that, you were you vaporized, and then after that, the Death Star blew up, so, you know, and, and we, we can get into it, you know, down the road about cloning and spirit transfers and shit like that, but I just think that, you know, uh, it was kind of a half-assed way to just, oh, look, Palpatine's back, who cares, watch the movie, he's back, so, you know, I didn't really care for that, um, you know, and then the whole... I don't know. I thought it was kind of cheap to give Ray his lineage. You know, it felt like kind of it felt like a it felt like a shoehorned way to tie her into the you know the the, the movies better. I, I don't understand why they couldn't have just had her be another random force user like Anakin or Yoda or somebody like that. I mean, because people do come from nothing in this world. I mean, it's not like the first time. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, it got a little soap operation cheesy. You know, you know Palp you are his granddaughter. You are Palpatine. Like, I just, I thought that was a little shoehorned in. Um, and, look, I don't really try to give J.J. too much shit for this because it doesn't help when the director before you comes in and just wipes out everything you did in the first movie. So I can understand how J.J. wanted to kind of course correct. But like I said before, I just think it was too much. It was it was too big of a task to do in this movie. And I think this movie faltered from that because it was just so all over the place. You're trying to cram in and set up so much stuff, you know, that you could have been setting up in the first two movies. But Ryan Johnson didn't do shit 
in the last movie to set anything up. So JJ had to come in and reset everything up in the beginning of this movie. And I felt by the time we got to the payoff, it was just, it, it, it wasn't executed properly. And that's another thing about the ending is I didn't care for the ending. The last battle, if you will, I didn't, uh, it, it, it went by way too fast. It really didn't have any stakes because we just found out that Ray was his granddaughter. If this would have been building since The Force Awakens to learn that she's Palpatine's granddaughter and a, you know a, a building rivalry and shit like that, I could understand that. But it just felt so shoehorned in at the last minute, and it just it it didn't work for me, man. It, it really didn't work for me. And I uh, I don't know, man. It just it was kind of cheap. You know, and Palpatine was kind of stupid. You know, it's like, bro, if you're going to shoot lightning at her and she deflects it, stop shooting lightning. I, I don't fucking get it. You would have learned. You, I, I thought you would have learned your lesson with Mace Windu in episode three when the dude is throwing your lightning in your face. You know, I thought this would have been a good example of, oh, shit, maybe I shouldn't do this again. You know, but uh, he didn't learn, apparently, and Ray just defeats him in a minute, two minutes. And I thought it was a really big missed opportunity to include a few uh, Force Ghosts. You know, there's a scene where Ray hears the voices to help her, you know, build up the courage to defeat Palpatine, basically. And I thought it would have been a really good chance to. Not all the Jedi, obviously, they've been crazy, but, you know, at least select few. Yoda, Mace Windu, Obi-Wan, Anakin, you know, a who's who type of Jedi. I, would, I thought that would have been cool to, kind of like in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire at the very end when he's battling Voldemort and his parents show up and help him with that final push. I thought this would have been great for that. But, um, yeah, and I didn't like the whole end game. They completely ripped off Avengers Endgame. You know, I am the Sith. I am all the Jedi. She even had that pause, too. You know, like how he says, and I am Iron Man. This bitch says, and I am all the Jedi. It's, it, c come on, Disney. Come the fuck on. That was so cheap and so blatantly ripped off. I, I kind of... I kind of shook my head at that, but it's not a movie killer for me, but it is cheesy as fuck, and I, I didn't really care for it, but, you know, um, overall, though, I had a good time watching this movie, it was fun, it was a, it was a great adventure film, it was nice to see Finn, Poe, and Ray all team up and go on this adventure together, there were a lot of plot conveniences, um, you know, they kind of took the easy way out a few times here and there, but, I'll get into that, we'll do, like, a long, in-depth discussion on the podcast, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I had fun. It was a fun movie. It felt a lot more like Star Wars than The Last Jedi did. The Last Jedi felt like a an afterthought or a stepchild, basically. But this kind of felt like Force Awakens. It makes me wish J.J. just would have done the whole trilogy. Like, they should have sat down in 2012 after they bought Lucasfilm. They should have planned out, okay, this is what we're going to do with this next trilogy. It's about this girl, blah, 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 blah. Here's movie one. Here's movie two. Here's movie three. And even if you do get new directors for each one, that's fine. But still have the same connected storyline. Don't say, okay, well, you can come in and direct episode eight, but you just do it how you want it. It's like, that's not how it works, guys. You don't do that with trilogies. So I think JJ should have just done all three. It probably would have been a lot more coherent, you know, in a, in a much better trilogy than we, than, than we got. So I just... You know, uh, it is what it is. We have what we have at the end of the day. It's over and done with. You know, there's really no point in bitching about it. I don't bitch about it. A lot of fans still do, unfortunately. But, um, you know, you just got to take we got what we got. That's pretty much the only the only thing to say about it. But, um, like I said, this felt more like a Star Wars film than uh, The Last Jedi. And I, I thought it was fun. You know, the the cinematography was great. You know, acting was, acting was pretty solid. Uh as far as the music, um, always love John Williams, one of the greatest composers of all time, but uh, I thought it was a lot of rehash pieces. I really didn't think this was a remarkable score, um, not a memorable one. Like This really didn't have like a Duel of the Fates or a Across the Stars or something like that. It didn't have like a, a massive musical number that we would remember for years and years. It was just kind of a rehash of all the other themes that he's used, but um, in the end, man, uh, it was it was fun. It was fun. Like I said, I was a little disappointed, but I had fun still, you know, but at the same time, what can you do when you have a movie like this? Uh, as far as the trilogy overall, I thought it was a very weak and lackluster trilogy. Um, I hope Disney takes some time to reflect and uh, hopefully plan better in the future. And, you know, I think they're doing a good job with The Mandalorian. I, uh, I, I loved what I saw from the first season. Um, I, I hear there's a lot of new shows in the works and... Um, you know, yeah, I mean, if they can regroup and come up with a new trilogy and plan it well in advance, then, you know, we might be on the right track. But until then, uh, 
this trilogy was okay. It was mediocre. It was very mediocre. Um, but anyways, that's going to do it, man. Uh, but anyways, that's that's going to do it. I just wanted to give my quick thoughts real quick, my quick unscripted, just off the cuff, you know, remarks just to get this video out there. But I am going to do a long, a much longer discussion, more in-depth uh, with some buddies of mine on the podcast. We're starting a new Star Wars show, like a weekly show on the podcast. Uh Probably start launching that in a, a couple weeks on the Indie Rundown. If you follow us on the Indie Rundown, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you'll be able to see. And, of course, on this YouTube page as well. Um, you know, we're still trying to make our way and get up there and get out in the public and start making more content so we can start growing as a channel and, you know, get a nice fan base and just have fun with you guys, man. We just... We just like to shoot the shit, like bar talk stuff like this. So, um, yeah, uh, as far as the rating, I'm going to give uh, Rise of Skywalker, uh, I'll give it a 6 out of a 10. Um, that's that's kind of where I sit. You know, it's like I said, it's just is underwhelming, but I still had fun. It's still enjoyable popcorn flick, you know. So, yeah, if you haven't seen it, go see it, make your own opinion, and don't be afraid to share your own opinion. Who gives a fuck what people think, man? If you like it, you like it. If you hate it, you hate it. I'm not going to dog you in any way. I'll let you know what I disagree with, but you know, I'll also take the time to listen to your listen to your side of things and, you know, try to look at it from a different perspective. But yeah, if you like it, you like it. Fuck it, man. Don't let anybody tell you. That's the problem with the world these days, man. People get too fucking uptight about other people's opinions. You know, and it just leads to a lot it just leads to a lot of toxicity and unwanted stress and arguing. It's just bullshit, man. So, anyways, I'm Zach, man. Uh, follow us on the Indie Rundown at Indie Rundown or at the Indie Rundown everywhere. Social media, all that shit. And uh, we'll be back soon with some more content. So peace. Be sure to follow the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at the Indie Rundown and like our Facebook page, the Indie Rundown Podcast.